For centuries, we've believed that being a success, being a champion, is about talent and about genetics. I became British table tennis number one for the first time in January 1995, and that was a big shock for the sporting community in the UK. I was still very young, and not many people expected me to get to the top that soon. So I was suddenly on the receiving end of these huge eulogies it's about a very specific genetic inheritance, about having oodles of talent. But I'm not sure that this narrative, which typically defines the way we describe success, has any validity. I think that success has something to do with something completely different. I grew up on Silverdale Road in suburban Reading, a pretty nondescript street, except for one thing. It had tons of great table tennis players, me and my brother. Karen Wick, Commonwealth Champion, Andy Wellman, one of the top players in the UK, Paul Trott, Keith Potter, it was unbelievable. In fact, that tiny, tiny locale produced more great table tennis players in the 1980s than the rest of the nation combined. If you think that it's all about genetics, why would it be that just that one specific street was affected? Consider this too, Spartak Moscow, an impoverished tennis club on the outskirts of Russia's capital, produced more top 20 players on the female side of the tennis game than the whole of the United States combined. Once again, our inclination to think of success in terms of genetics has to be flawed. When you dig down into the lives of all great performers, whether it's David Beckham in football, Serena Williams, Roger Federer, myself in, in table tennis, or Picasso in the arts, what we have all had, the thing we have shared, is very specific, often unique opportunities to clock up lots of practice. In my case, that was brought about because Pete Charter's coach on Silverdale Road, he was the best table tennis coach in the country. He provided access to the only 24-hour table tennis club in the south of England. Now, you're going to say that you need both opportunity on the one hand and talent on the other, but that is not what the science is saying. The reason I say that genes are not that important is because over time through practice we utterly transform the people we are. It's like when we're practicing we're downloading very specialized software that enables us to engage more successfully in whatever area we're practicing within. And you can actually see this in brain scanning. Certain areas of the brain get bigger, we develop new neural connections, myelin and insulating material makes the signals traveling through the brain that much faster and ultimately when you look at the science rather than our own implicit biases you arrive at the conclusion that champions are not born they're made